In today's video, I will show you a new and updated one-shot Viesta build in the first Descendant. So in this build guide, we will look into the best weapons and modules that you want to get. Then I will explain every single skill and show you the best reactor and external components. And then lastly, we will take a closer look at the gameplay and weapon mods, so you would know the reason behind every single build choice and what exactly will give us this insane damage that we can do 300 to 400k crit damage by just using one simple skill, then standing still and stacking our damage buffs to the roof. So, if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So, our new one-shot Viesta build is insanely powerful because we will use a specific module setup in combination with just one simple skill. And right now, the setup is just way too overpowered. If you want to get millions of XP, gold and items, then I definitely recommend for every player to level your Viesta to 40 and use this build to farm every single thing that you need for your other characters. And by the way, this build is far better than Valby or any other build for loot caves or any other loot farming. So then with that said, now let's take a look at our modules. And for the first one, we have the Cold Bloodiness, which when using a skill, increases the skill power and decreases skill cost and skill cooldowns. But the caveat is that we have to stand still for the full effect and max damage buffs, because otherwise, the Frost Road effect won't be created if our character moves. Then next up we have the Long Distance Maneuvering, which modifies the grappling hook range to 25 meters, but the base charge time changes to 6 seconds, and the charge time increases by 20%. This will also increase your max module capacity, which is our main goal. Then the Battle of Stamina, that increases the max HP by 12%, and skill duration by 8%, then Nimble Fingers that reduces the skill cooldowns by 6%, then Focus on Chill, which increases the chill skill power by 19%, and reduces the skill cooldowns by 6%, then MP Conversion, that reduces the skill cooldowns by 9%, but reduces max mana as well by 4%, then Maximize Range, which increases the skill range by 24%, but reduces the skill power by 5%, then Frugal Mindset, which reduces the skill cost by 2% and increases the skill effect range by 6%. Then Maximize Duration, which increases the skill duration by 10% and reduces skill power modifier by 5%. Then Skill Expansion, that increases the skill effect range by 12%. Then Focus on Tech, that increases the tech skill power modifier by 17% and reduces the skill cooldowns by 6%. And finally, the skill extension, which increases the skill duration by 9%. So overall, our main goal with this setup is to make our abilities as powerful as possible, while reducing their cooldowns, so we could spam them 24-7 and have these massive, half a million DPS crits by just standing still. Then next up, let's take a look at the best weapons and the mods that we should use. And as for our build, we will be only using skills, so I will show you the only two main weapons for when your character is moving, and then the third weapon slot is up to each player's preference. But to be honest, I've even seen other players having zero weapons in their slot, and just using skills by themselves. So again, this is up to you. And then for the first weapon, we have the Thunder Cage, and the way you get it is by reaching Mastery Rank 1, then getting the Thunder Cage Blueprint, Thunder Cage Nanotube, Thunder Cage Polymer Sanctium, and the Thunder Cage Synthetic Fiber from various battlefield missions across the sterile land, and afterwards then take those 4 Thunder Cage materials to the Anais in Albion, and pay 100k to start the research. And then when you get it, for mods we wanna go with the better insight, for increased critical hit rate by 10%, then mental focus, which reduces the fire rate by 10%, but now instead when we shoot, our weapon's ADK increases by 0.8% for 2 seconds and this can stack up to 30 times. So this is very useful for when we are fighting bosses. Then next up we have the Concentration Priority, which increases the critical hit damage by 8% and reduces reload time by 8%. Then Better Concentration, that increases the critical hit damage by 9%. Then Rifling Reinforcement, that increases the ATK by 12%. Then Fire Rate Up, that increases our fire rate by 6%. Then Action and Reaction, which increases the ADK by 15% and Recoil by 5%. Then Have Aiming, that increases the weak point damage by 10%, but reduces accuracy by 5%. And 
then expand weapon charge, that increases our rounds per magazine by 12%. And finally, the weak point sight, that yet again increases our weak point damage by 10%, but reduces accuracy by 5%. So as you can see, because of our setup, we can do millions of DPS, and this is because we are using the most optimized mods, which are all maxed out, and are made to stack as much ADK, crit damage and crit rate as humanly possible. But of course, these numbers will vary for every player, because they are dependent on your specific reactor, your descendant modules, and how high or low your weapon levels and upgrades are. And then for the second weapon, which is yet another optional choice, we have the Enduring Legacy. And the way you get it is by collecting all four blueprints, which are Enduring Legacy Blueprint, Enduring Legacy Nanotube, Enduring Legacy Polymer Syncium, and the Enduring Legacy Synthetic Fiber. There are many spots that you can grind to create these materials, but the best farm I found for myself were the Intercept Battles on Hard Mode and Echo Swamp, specifically the Abyssal Void Fusion Reactor. And then when you got all four blueprints, then just go to the Anais in Albion and spend 100k to start the research. And then when you get it, for mods we wanna go with the Mental Focus, which reduces our fire rate by 10%. But now instead when we fire our weapon, we get 0.8 ADK increase for 2 seconds, and this can stack up to 30 times. So, as we have 100 rounds in a magazine, we can do insane damage with our buffs and stacks. What I've seen as well a lot of players do is just to use the skill and stand still, and just use the Enduring Legacy to burst down any other enemy. And because we are standing still and we have 100 rounds, so we can do insane damage on top of everything else. Then next up we have the Action and Reaction, which increases the ADK by 15%, and Recoil by 5%, then Rifling Reinforcement, that increases the ADK by 12%, then Better Insight, that increases the critical hit rate by 10%, then Concentration Priority, that increases the critical hit damage by 8%, but reduces our reload time by 8%, then Expand Weapon Charge, that increases our rounds per magazine by 12%, then better concentration, that increases the critical hit damage by 9%. Then fire rate up, or increased fire rate by 6%. Then edging shot, which increases the critical hit rate by 9%, but reduces our weapon's ADK by 4%. And finally the weak point sight, that increases the weak point damage by 10%, but reduces our accuracy by 5%. Then next up let's go over to the base reactor and external components. So your reactor is very important item, that determines your skill damage and can also include extra modifiers that buff certain aspects of your build. I recommend prioritizing using reactor with the highest skill power and a sub attack power. Specifically, my best job that I got is this burning mechanics reactor. But as I didn't get an SMG condition, so I'm still farming for a better piece. And then as for your external components, they're even more of an RNG, at least until you've played the game for long enough to find every single possible combination with a good stat roll. So for our build specifically, I recommend to get the Annihilation Auxiliary Power, that increases our max HP and defenses. And because we are using all 4 set pieces, so we get plus 6% duration, and our weapon's ADK increases depending on your max HP lost. Then next up we have the Annihilation Sensor for defenses and shield recovery, then Annihilation Memory for increased max shields and HP. And lastly, the Annihilation Processor for more max HP. And finally, let's quickly take a look at our skills and when we should use them. So for the first passive skill, we have the Ice Sphere, which inflicts Ice Shackles that create an Ice Sphere, that fly to another nearby enemy, dealing AoV damage and inflicting Ice Shackle. Then our first active skill is the Frost Shards, that fires Frost Shards to the damaged enemies and deal AoV damage. This will also inflict the Ice Shackle. Then the second one is Frost Road, which increases the movement speed and shield, and creates an ice sheet on the ground that inflict the ice shackle effect. Then the Cold Snap skill, which will deal chill damage to the enemies in front of your character, and of course inflict ice shackle. And finally we have the Blizzard skill, which creates a blizzard that deals continuous damage, debuffs defenses, and inflicts AoV and ice shackle. And this is the main part of our setup. So then in a quick summary, our main gameplay is very simple, we wanna find a good spot, then we just use the blizzard skill and one shot the enemies, because of our insane buffs, and unlike other AOV farming builds, 
We don't have to go in a circle or do anything like that, but instead all we do is stand still and use the blizzard skill and one shot anyone in our way. Then when all enemies die, we just wait for the next spawn to reappear and that's it. By using this build and method, a lot of players are currently farming millions of XP, massive amounts of currency and much more. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With that said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy. Peace.